This is part 114 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss lead and lag functions in SQL Server. Both of these functions are introduced in SQL Server 2012. Lead function is used to access subsequent row data along with the current row data. Lag function on the other hand is used to access previous row data along with the current row data. With both of these functions, order by clause is required, partition by clause is optional. We have the syntax here. First, we specify the name of the function, lead or lag. Both these functions have got three parameters. Out of these three parameters, only the first parameter, column name, is required. The rest of the two parameters are optional. So the first parameter, column name, specifies the column value that we want to lead or lag. The second parameter is offset. This parameter specifies the number of rows to lead or lag. If we don't specify a value for this parameter, the default will be 1. The third parameter is default value, which specifies what value to return if the number of rows to lead or lag goes beyond first row or last row in a table or a partition. If the default value is not specified because it is optional, null will be returned. Followed by that, we use the over clause and then within parentheses, we specify order by and then the column list by which we want to sort the data. Let's look at a couple of examples now. Let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. We'll use this employees table. Within our result set, we want name, gender, salary, and then let's use the lead function. With the lead function, only the first parameter, column name, is required. So we want to lead or lag salary column value. So we specify the column name and then followed by that we use the over keyword and then within parentheses we use order by and then let's sort the data by salary column. Let's give this column an alias. Let's call this lead. Let's execute this query and see what we get. So basically here we haven't specified offset parameter value right? So if we don't specify a value for offset parameter, the default is going to be 1. So what does lead 1 does? So we are on the first row right here and the column that we have specified here is salary, meaning we want to lead or lag salary column value. And we have sorted this data by salary column in ascending order, okay? So we are on the first row, marks salary is 1000 and the default value for offset here is 1. So we want to lead one row. So what this is going to do is it's going to look up the next row data. So within the next row, what is the salary column value? 2000. And that's what is displayed in this lead column right here. So while we are on the current row, we're able to lead, that is we are able to look down one row because we have specified offset value as 1 and then take the salary column value and display that in the current row. So while we are on the current row, we have access to subsequent row data depending on the value that you have specified for offset parameter. So similarly, when we are on the second row, we are able to retrieve the third row salary column value and display that within the current row. Similarly, when we are on this last row, look at this. We don't have a row beyond this last row in this table. So that's why we get null. Again, you know, the third parameter default value is optional. If we don't specify it, and if there is no row to lead or lag, you know, this function is going to return null. Now, if you don't want null, if you want a default value for that, you can specify what is that default value, okay? So now, instead of relying on the defaults, let's specify an explicit value for offset. So let's say we want to lead two rows and the default value is going to be minus one. Now let's execute this query and see what we get. Now it should lead two rows from the current row. So when we are on first row, it's going to look down two rows. So it's going to go to the third row, retrieve its salary column value, and display that within the current row. Okay, and look at what happened when we are on row nine. So lead of two is basically saying, look down two rows, but we don't have two rows. Beyond this row 10, there are no more rows. So it's going to return null, but since we have uh, specified a default value of minus one, that's what is displayed here instead of null. Okay, now let's see what happens when we use lag function. So lead function allows us to look down, whereas lag function allows us to 
look back. Now let's say I want to lag by one row. And in case if there are no rows to lag, we want this minus one as the default value instead of null. Okay, and let's change the column name here to lag. Let's execute this and see what we get. So look at this, we are on the first row. Lag of one is basically telling, look what we have before this row. So this is the first row in the table, there's nothing else to look back. So this is going to return null, but since we specified a default value of minus one, that's what is returned. And if you look at this last row here, the previous row for this last row is this one, and the value there is 9000, and that's what is displayed right here. So that's what lead and lag functions does. Okay. At the moment, we don't have any partitions in the table. Now, we can also use partition by clause along with lead or lag functions. Let's see what's going to happen when we partition the data by using the partition by clause. Let's partition the data by gender column. Let's do the same thing for lag function as well. Let's execute this and see what we get. All right, first of all, notice the data in the result set is partitioned into two partitions, female and male. First, let's look at the female employees partition. So we are on the first row at the moment, and we are saying lead two rows. So it's going to look up the third row salary column value, which is 6,000. That will be displayed here. And then when we are on the second row, it's again going to look up. So fourth row, 8,000, that's what we get. When we are on the third row, it tries to look up, you know, the second row. Now, if you look at this female employees partition, we don't have a second row when we are on the third row within that partition. It crosses the partition. Okay, so that's why it is going to return null. And since we have specified a default value, it returns minus one. Same is the case for this row as well. And lag function is also going to work exactly, you know, like the lead function within a partition, but instead of looking forward, it will look back. So we have our first example here without partitions and our second example with partitions. Thank you for listening and have a great day.